Uh, thanks for all you, thanks for being here. Uh, got back late Sunday night about 11 or 12. Uh, yesterday, just visited with the teams. Uh, excuse me, visit with our team. Uh, watched film. Had a film session at 4:15, and before and after that, we just had a, a weight group. One group lifted weights and stretched, and just tried to get their bodies back feeling good. And another group shot and uh, shot free throws and did some individual workout stuff. Just getting some shots up for about 45 minutes, and it was a brief day, just kind of a recovery day. And they're actually over there right now. Uh, we have two different shooting groups, and now that school's out, you know, we'll do uh, not necessarily two a days, but we'll get extra shots in in the morning, or go through half court offense in the morning, and then come back with a real practice in the afternoon. But all our attention now shifts to Lipscomb. Uh, been able to watch them last night and this morning. A very good basketball team. If you look at who they've played, you look at their scores. Um, they've been able to be three and one against the Ohio Valley Conference teams. They've been able to play a really good game at Illinois State and, in a, and at Illinois. Illinois is undefeated. Uh, they've been able to win two neutral site games. So uh, very, very uh, talented guards, uh, and they play really fast. And Memphis plays very fast. They like to play very fast as well, almost average 80 points a game. So we need to have two really good days of practice and um, be really locked in and focused on the defensive end to be able to win Thursday. Is it safe to say that the game against there's no doubt about it. It's a huge game. It's a, it's the next game, uh, so that's why it's the biggest game. But we got to continue to get better, and that's why it's why it's the biggest game of the year. During the Memphis game, it kind of looked like uh, Dante and maybe Jawan uh, might have got nicked up a little bit, maybe an ankle or something. How are they doing? Uh, I think it was more just cramping. I don't think it was anything injury-wise. I think it was just fatigue. That was a high-level, high-intensity game, and I think they just got worn down at the end, of fatigue and uh, and cramping, and they were a little sore yesterday. But I think they're rested, and that's why we lifted yesterday. Thought it was a good idea to lift, to to where they just weren't laying around all day, and they get the blood flowing a little bit. Is a game like that one of those where you kind of wake up the next day a lot more sore than you were maybe after the adrenaline wears off and things like that? Yeah, I think I think you're exactly right. Even Zay Jackson, he played 20-something minutes, I think, but he was heavy leg yesterday just talking to him and it's good for them to lift just to get the blood flowing and and shoot a little bit nothing strenuous but just don't want to lay around in bed all day I don't think that would just be the best best thing to do and uh, so got him up a little bit and get him rested and, and ready to go for today. Coach after beating Memphis and you know you guys are, are ranked kids are obviously excited uh, any concern about getting them up for them to lift them at all? Not really. I, you know, maybe some of them know. We, I didn't even address it with the team yesterday when I met with the team. I mean, the polls were out, at, you know, earlier in that day, but we didn't talk about that at all. We watched tape on Memphis, showed our positives and negatives of the game, and then just put all our attention on Lipscomb. This is a big game. Uh, Lipscomb is just right down the road. They're very well coached. Uh, they've got very good players. Uh, I know their staff very well, and they'll be really prepared. You talked a little bit in the last press conference about <coughs> making a, a tape of good Ivan and bad Ivan. How did you feel he responded when, when he was big for you guys in his Memphis? Yeah, I thought he made it. The best play he made was probably off transition. Isaiah post-fed him, had a really nice left-handed jump hook. I thought that was a great finish for him. But Ivan, the one thing I just got to challenge Ivan more is to continue to, to rebound better. Um, I like his numbers, four for six from the field. Um, but he's got to rebound better. His numbers have dropped a little bit, down to about five. Uh, five and a half, and he's very capable. Um, he's been great for us. He's been a workhorse. His effort's been awesome. His leadership's been great, and uh, he's just going to continue to do great things for us. But we want to get the ball inside and want to get it to him because he's very good around the basket. He's a 50% three-point shooter right now. Um, you know, are you surprised when he uh, rears up and takes that shot? If it's you know I don't want him shooting it obviously when it's about 18 20 on the clock but if we if we're in our you know offensive set and it's late clock and he catches it 17 feet 19 feet from the goal you know five four on the shot clock Ivan's skilled he can make a 17 foot or so a three is just a step a step back so he's been able the one in Memphis was a was a decent shot you know that was a rhythm shot the one in Alaska was you know prayers was answered on that one. Uh, but the one in Memphis was a rhythm shot, and you know if you sit around before practice, Ivan can 
go around and make you know can make some of those. But if he knows, it's not something we're going to be you know doing a bunch. The one in Memphis was that a call plot? By him only. By him. <laughs> <laughs> the clock, the clock down, but it was it was late shot clock. Yeah. So if it's four or three on the shot clock, you know a guard driving in there and taking a. Isaiah taking a tough contested shot like we did a couple times in Memphis and us having a, you know, nobody back on defense. Ivan taking a clean open jumper with three or four on the shot clock and us having a set defense with our guards getting back is probably a lot better. Coach, you were asked about it on Sunday. Even some national guys now are talking about the undefeated, uh, undefeated talk. Are you guys prepared to, to listen to those questions if you can uh, continue to win all season? Yeah, I mean, those are going to come. I mean, it's, it's early. It's just 10 games. Um, you know, my biggest mindset right now is finishing the non-conference schedule this week. This will be the toughest week of our season so far uh, with the attention. Um, that's why I'm not trying to build it up too much with the guys. They've been great just going day to day. Just here and there, I read up a little bit on their quotes, and they're focused. Their, their effort's going to be the same whether we're ranked 7th or whether we're ranked 46th. So their, their focus is on Lipscomb. They know Lipscomb's very good. A lot of our guys are familiar with them. And our goal is to win Thursday and, and get win number 11. Just a little info on uh, Arkansas State, what you know about them? I uh, like their team a lot. We've recruited a lot of their uh, players, uh, so very familiar with um, their team, with Coach Brady. They're going to be well coached. Coach Williams is one of the assistant, very experienced staff. Brady took LSU to the Final Four. He's done a great job at Arkansas State in a very short time. They're picked to win the uh, Sun Belt, their side of the Sun Belt, I believe, this year. Uh, led by uh, Marcus Hooten and Trey Finn on the perimeter, very good tandem. We recruited Marcus Hooten out of junior college a little bit last year. Brandon Peterson, their starting four-man, played AAU with Ed Daniel, and we recruited him very hard. Uh, and then their five-man, Malcolm Kirkland, is an Oklahoma State transfer, and their point guard from Mississippi kid from Starkville, Townsville. So very good starting five. Um, they've been up and down a little bit. I think the record's four and five, five and five. Uh, they had to dismiss one of their top post players early in the season, Martavius Adams. So they're going to be well prepared. That, that is going to be another really tough game. Is there any danger that you all might be peaking right now? No, I don't. You know, I, I think about that all the time just from a coaching standpoint. Um, that's why we got to continue just to stay humble and get better in practice and continue to find – easier ways to score and, and, and ways to be better defensively and this break with, over the Christmas break where we have time to you know rehash some things or put a couple new things in will help our team grow. Going back and watching the film against Memphis, is what are the things that you've noticed that you, you talk about how you guys are going to continue to get better, what are some things you guys are going to focus on in that area? Now just getting better containing the basketball. Uh, I thought our transition defense was pretty good for the most part especially how fast they run and, and push the basketball but uh, containing drill penetration, you know, being up the line, being helping the helping the helper, or helping contain the basketball. Really stress that, stress boxing out, making sure we're doing a good job boxing out, and then in our rotations, because a lot of people, and nowadays setting a lot of ball screens, making sure our rotations are right, and then on the offensive end, limiting our turnovers. I think we got to still get our turnovers down from about 15 to around that 11 or 10 area, um, and not shot selection at times. Continue to get that better. And then our turnovers, were our, in, our, in our offense, sometimes it just kind of dies and gets stagnant. We've got to keep the ball moving.